Good morning, everyone. I guess it's almost uh, uh, now afternoon, and um, I'm hoping that I can say welcome to Spring in Ontario, finally. I'm Dale Bedell. I'm the Chief Executive and Philanthropy Officer for United Way Simcoe Muskoka, and it's my real pleasure today to welcome you to this Legacy Giving webinar. And uh, before we get underway, because we're going to do that very shortly. Um, I want to acknowledge and thank one of our board members uh, here today, Paul Chapman, who is with uh, RBC and also was able to uh, provide some support from RBC in order to make this possible today. So uh, I'm very keen to go through this presentation. I met Scott earlier this week and uh, the questions he is, is going to pose early on is always a question that I struggle with, which is what is my legacy? How do I figure that out? Um, so whether or not that's a, a question already answered for you or one that you're giving some thought to, I know you're going to enjoy Scott's presentation and I'm going to let Scott uh, introduce himself and, and um, I'll pass it over, Scott. You can do that and we can get underway promptly. Great. Thanks, Dale. Glad to be able to do this. So my name's Scott, Scott Van Engen, uh, Wealth Management uh, with the Wealth Management Team at RBC. I'm a financial planning specialist, chartered accountant by background, and I've worked with uh, uh, worked for a number of years in public practice with with clients and the last uh, 12 or 13 years or so with uh, with uh, with RBC through a wealth management team in the last, you know, probably the last eight years in private banking and now with our uh, with our uh, 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 high net worth uh, clients. And so really working with clients on estate planning, tax planning, uh, bigger picture financial planning, and certainly a component of that can be around legacy giving or giving and, and uh, creating a legacy for, for your family, creating a legacy for, for uh, uh, supporting the community into the future. And so, so today we're going to kind of go through that, that process. Uh, we're going to look at, you know, what are some of the background pieces with respect to creating a plan around legacy what are some of the background pieces around donations and making donations to to begin with? Just so we have an a, you know an idea, kind of a level playing field of of all of the components, and then move into some of the pieces around bigger picture legacy. Um, so I think what we'll try to do is move through the presentation today. If you've got any questions. Um, by all means, we can answer them as we go through. So perhaps that's something we can we can monitor. But by all means, at the end, uh, we should be able to have a few minutes for questions as as well. And so just to start then, you know, and kind of looking at, uh, you know, the future and, and the big picture is it is about, you know, what do you want your legacy to be? So Dale, you, you kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier in terms of, you know, thinking about what that might be. How do you want to be remembered? What is it that you as, and your family want to be known for if, if creating a legacy is important to you? So I want you to, you know, spend a moment or two as we go through our conversation today, uh, the presentation today, thinking about what that legacy might be. And when we get to the last few slides, we start looking at what are some of the options with respect to that. When we look at giving and we look at giving smarter or giving in an you know, easier fashion or having some more impact, it's you know, one of the questions that we start to ask is, is why is it that we, that we give to begin with? So what are those things that are important? And so when properly done, charitable uh, giving provides benefits not only to the community, but to you and your family as donors. And it allows you to, you know, support and help the causes that are important to to you and your family. So that's a real reason why we we look to give. And within the context of that, you know, what are those components? What are those pieces that help us look at making it easier, making it smarter, making it with with more impact? And so we're going to look at, you know, giving as a whole, what is, you know, charitable giving and the different components of that. We're going to look at the tax side of it because often it is the tax benefits that drive a lot of our our, our giving. What are the different options for, for charitable giving? And how do we look at it in the context of giving a legacy? And so a small gift, you know, today may be somewhat, you know, insignificant or not significant, but that gift could really make a big change or a big difference in the life of somebody going forward. And so significance can can vary based on the types of gifts that we that we are able to give. You know, we're you know, Canadians by large are a caring group. 
Um, we care about our communities. We care about our country. We care about our different institutions, and we want to be able to support those uh, those institutions and those those charities. And so, you know, giving is a portion of that, and and it's being able to help out the less fortunate. And you know, speaks to why we give and why why it's important to us as a as a as a community. So we're going to start with what is a charitable gift. What are some of those important components of what makes up a, a, a charitable gift and uh, how we kind of move through that process when we when we are giving. So some of this might be a little bit of a refresher. If you're if you're if you're if you've been a, a family that gives already, then you know much of this is, is maybe known, but I thought it was important to have a baseline to to work from. And so certainly we can give gifts of cash, uh, gifts in kind, you know, typically can be real estate, uh, can be uh, property. Uh, Often it's securities or stocks that you might own where you gift those 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 uh, stocks to a charity uh, uh, and there's some benefits to that. Um, could also be that there's some personal use property, some some important property that's uh, you know important to you or to the community and you gift that as well. Um, there are the opportunities to gift future payments. Often that's tied to insurance type products and so we'll look at that as well. Um, and certainly you know those donations can be one time donations. They can be a series of payments over over time. Um, they can be a deferred type payment uh, in, into the future. So often in our wills, we'll gift something that will be a deferred payment into the future. And so those are all components of what make up, you know, the component, you know, what makes up charitable charitable giving. And so what are some of those benefits? You know, certainly we want to support the organizations that we have a connection to. So whether that's relief of um, poverty or education or supporting the community, often a number of our charities now will have, uh, you know, enterprises or activities that are the part of what they're doing. So they've got almost these uh, social businesses that are happening. And so that that could be part of what we're giving to is to support the the activities of the organizations to build on those 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 uh, business activities. So often you think of you know summer camps or uh, uh, writing lessons or or uh, after school education programs could be more more business like in their in their nature and and charities need support to be able to to make sure that they're offering those as well. There is obviously the the tax benefit side and giving to a registered charity. Uh, that's where the tax benefit comes. So if it's if you're giving to a not for profit or a or a or a, or a social enterprise that's not part of a registered charity, there's not going to be a donation receipt attached to that because it is only the the registered charity that can give the donation receipt. So that's often what we'll look at, um, especially on the personal side. Sometimes with our businesses, we're able to support those types of organizations, and it's more of a deductible expense for business purposes, not so much on the on the personal side. We'd also look at, you know, there are certain gifts that we can give of our time and our services that may not be recognized or not may not be eligible for for charitable purposes. So that's that's something we consider as well. Or if we've given general property that has little value, then then that's also, uh, you know, may not attach a, a donation receipt with it. But you know, certainly we want to look at what are those those uh, those contributions that can be helpful. And also if there's a benefit to it from the tax perspective, that's what we want to try to or as usually as donors that we're looking for. So those tax benefits, I'm going to take us through just a quick example of what that looks like. It's about really creating that that claim to a non-refundable tax credit that that we've made to a charitable organization, and that gives us some relief on our personal tax returns. And there's some some pieces with respect to that that allow us to look at how that that happens from a from a bigger picture. So so briefly, just to give us an update on on where and how the the tax credits work. Um, and not to belabor this, you know, the accountant and me can almost take over and, you know, let's do a whole bunch of tax calculations, but I'll try to refrain from from that because, you know, there's a reason why I don't have any hair. It's because I do those calculations and you guys don't need to be bothered with that. So, so how does this all fit together? So if we're giving some donations, there's federal tax credits that are available for those for those components. So there's a, you know, there's kind of three levels, if you like, of tax credits that are there. So the first level, the first $200, you get a 15% tax credit. There's a provincial component that goes to that as well. 
anything over that $200 amount is eligible for a 29% tax credit. And so on in total for, for a contribution of a, of a thousand dollars, there's, you know, federally there's about 263, $262 worth of tax credit that are available. Tie that with in with the provincial, provincial tax returns. And we're probably in that, you know, 30 cents on the dollar that you're able to save from a tax perspective. If you're a higher income earner and you, and you earn income over the, the higher tax brackets that, that we have, there is an additional tax uh, benefit for credits over 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 uh, income essentially of two hundred and fifteen to two hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. The tax credits increase to thirty three percent. So the larger the income, the larger the tax credits, the more access that we potentially have to this this higher tax credit amount. And so a quick example of that, uh, you know, if we were in a in a in an area, it, you know, income was in that neighborhood of two hundred thirty thousand. So just really getting us above that that top federal rate. Uh, bracket, and you made a donation of twenty thousand dollars. You'd get the fifteen percent on the first two hundred thousand two hundred dollars. You get uh, a portion. Then now looks at your the donation that's above that federal uh, top bracket. And so if we're fifteen thousand dollars above that top bracket, so kind of in this neighborhood, we get an enhanced tax credit of thirty three percent for that balance. And then any balance that falls between the Two hundred dollars and that fifteen thousand dollar amount, we get the twenty nine percent amount for. So, all told, federally, we get a little bit more of a, a, a tax credit on that larger donation if our income is if your income is higher. And so, you you'd manage that out. You probably in about a forty six percent tax tax credit in terms of against the taxes that you would otherwise pay. So that's kind of how the, the you know the tax benefit you know comes together. And so, what I wanted to kind of relate that to is. A couple of rules or a couple of things that happen with respect to donations. You can save up your donations. You don't have to take a deduction or take a tax credit for them in the year that you give. So you actually have five years that you can gather together donations and carry them forward and use them in a year, perhaps a year where you have a little bit more income or a year that you know that you're going to have some larger donations in a subsequent year. If you save those up, you can actually enhance that tax credit. So the more that you get over that two hundred dollar, you know, fifteen percent level, you get twenty nine percent tax credit level at it. So that that can be interesting, and there are some limitations. So you cannot give more or use more than uh, uh, donations in a year than a, that equal up to seventy five percent of your income for for tax purposes. And so so some boundaries on that. But you know what might be a more impact uh, uh, option to consider is that if you save up a couple of years worth of donations, then you'd be able to see a, a little bit better tax credit on that going forward. So that's something to keep in mind. What are some of the options that we want to look at? Why are why, you know, why is giving important to us? So making charitable giving uh, you know, provides a chance for us to give back to the community. Um, it certainly is is a way that we're able to you know, see that we can receive some some incentives on on that community contribution as well. And so we feel good about giving and we we also feel good about that. It might you know save us a little bit of tax on a, on an annual basis, but generally it's you know those are kind of side side impacts. What are the options around giving? We kind of touched on these a little bit earlier, so I just wanted to go through them in a little bit more detail uh, as to what are the different types of, of ways that you can that you can give. And so off the top, there's donating cash. Obviously, it's the easiest, the most straightforward. You you give a donation of of cash to a to a charitable organization. You get a donation receipt and uh, you move forward with making your your tax claims and the charity uses that cash for the purposes that you've that you've given it to so you know pretty straightforward in being able to to do that another option that that exists is gifts in kind and so this is where we're looking at more at gifting of property or giving of of assets that may not just be you know cash related in terms of the type of gift that that someone gives and so this is often what we'll look at from a planning perspective um, where there's some advantages and so gifting you know personal use property or gifting shares that you may own or inventory that may be useful for a charity you know you get a donation receipt for the value of that in-kind donation and what's interesting about um, about a, a you know a gift of a of a, a stock of a public corporation especially if there's a large capital gain that's associated with it and you were wanting to give a donation to a charity for tax purposes the capital gain may not be taxable or likely not taxable because you gifted that asset now to to a charitable organization the charity's happy to receive that 
that donation of the stock of that of that corporation it was going to sell that stock most likely right away and because it really just wants the cash so turn it into cash you're going to go to you're going to receive a donation receipt for the fair market value of that that gift that you've given and you're not going to have to include that capital gain in tax and and pay tax on it so there's really an, an interesting an interesting benefit uh, for that kind of a gift and so again a quick example really just to show what what you know what happens and so if you had a donation of a a stock of two two that was worth two thousand dollars that you paid a thousand dollars for there'd be a capital gain that you'd have to recognize for tax purposes if you sold that stock to gift the two thousand dollars worth of cash you're going to pay tax on half of the value of that capital gain so five hundred dollars is going to be taxable and roughly speaking we we'd pay about half of that as tax so it's going to vary depending on other income that you have but that's going to cost about 250 dollars in tax you're going to receive about 920 dollars in tax credit savings because you've given a donation of two thousand dollars and so your out-of-pocket cost is around thirteen hundred and thirty dollars to give that two thousand dollar donation if you donated the shares directly so the difference is going to be obviously the capital gain so the charity gets the two thousand dollars they're going to be happy with that we don't have to include that capital gain and in income and pay tax on it so there's no tax on the capital gain and we get the tax credit benefit for the fact that we've given that donation. So our out-of-pocket cost is actually only $1,080 to give that $2,000 donation. So that's kind of an interesting way to be able to look at, at giving. So having more impact, you may be able to use the fact that you own um, shares in corporations, shares in, in, in company stock that you can give and receive an enhanced benefit and the charity gets, gets to use the, the funds towards their purpose. Donation of personal use property, you know, so this tends to be another area that, you know, that can be there. So this is, this might be more along the lines of the, you know, type of type of gift that's related to um, uh, types of gifts that are related to uh, valued uh, antiques or products that are, or, or, or assets that you would give. There's not really a cost base to them, so sometimes that you know there is the ability to use a thousand dollars as the, as the cost base, and you get a donation receipt. Art might fall into this into this kind of a, a into this kind of a a pocket as well. So so donating of that personal use property could be you know useful for that for that charitable organization, and and also in terms of you being able to contribute. There's also the ability to donate insurance type products and so there's you know impacts in terms of being able to give an immediate gift of insurance so you know you, you've you've gifted an insurance policy that's a surplus policy the, the the charity is named as the the beneficiary of that policy and the owner of that policy there could be a deemed disposition that happens in that process of doing it so that's something you could check out with your, your insurance people uh, but the benefit would be that down the road when that insurance policy is now realized so if you've passed away or the individual that's being insured has passed away the do the donation is going to go go directly to that in to that uh, to that charity so this tends to be some of the longer term endowment type gifting that we see one interesting twist is that you know if you're continuing to make premium payments on that policy they actually might be eligible for uh, treatment as a as a donation uh, contribution each year because you're continuing to pay that that policy there's also the ability to look at, you know, deferred gifts, if you like, or something that's, you know, down the road or even a little bit further. So you've named the insurance, you've named on your insurance policy, the charity to be the recipient of the gift. And so that, that, that's what we call a deferred gift in that you've, you've named that beneficiary down the road. So those are some options around, around giving, you know, it's about creating that long-term legacy. Uh, what's important to you, what's important to your family, what's important during your lifetime, and how do we actually look at it from the standpoint strategically with your estate or strategically each year in terms of a planned giving process. And so what are some of those options from a from a legacy perspective? There's kind of two er two ways or two two areas that we give. Uh, we can give through our wills or kind of the 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 through the value of our estate when we're we're finished, if you like, with with our with our assets, and we give those to charity or a portion of those to charity amongst our other beneficiaries. And there's also the ability to to give during during your lifetime. And so, these these top three areas are are, are points are really around gifting from a planned giving perspective, and the last three points are giving during your lifetime that are more so around you know what are the options that that exist. 
And so if we look at gifting under your wills, you're actually naming a beneficiary, you're naming a you're naming a, a charitable organization to receive a gift through your through your will, through the planning of your of your will and and uh, you want that to go to a qualified charity. Um, it's going to be something that's going to perhaps help with your tax planning from an estate perspective, where if that donation has gone to that charity, there's going to be some tax credits that show up on your personal tax return, the final tax returns that you file. And so it's kind of that connection of, of is there some tax advantages to it? And do you want to support that, that charity as a, as a legacy gift from your will? In some cases, in combination with that, we can actually donate or name a charity as the beneficiary of our RSPs or retirement income funds, and and so they those are designations that can that that can be made. And on death, those proceeds would automatically go to the named beneficiary. And in some cases, a um, a charitable organization can be named in in that uh, in that uh, position if they're going to receive that that. That donation directly. We have to be careful that there are some rules around how your estate gets settled, how your estate manages that through uh, through its process, and you know there's um, so it's something that we really need to. If you're going to do something like provide that kind of a gift to a charitable organization, you want to make sure that you're including your your accountants in that in that conversation, and, and even your executors and your lawyers in that conversation to make sure that they're properly able to use that donation that that's made. That tends can tend to be a larger, a larger donation, and one of the reasons why we would do that is on, on death, on the second death, everything that's in an RSP or a retirement income fund all comes into income on that final tax return and is taxed as if it were received as, as a salary income, regular income in that year, and so that donation of a large, uh, of an equal amount or or a larger RSP contribution can offset some of that that tax side. There's also an you know an ability to create a charitable remainder trust. So this is a, a little bit of a um, an interesting tool as well. So you create a, a trust that's set up that the beneficiary of that trust is going to be a charity. Uh, during your lifetime, you could gift assets. Generally, they're, they're investment type assets to that, to that trust. Uh, during your lifetime, you're able to use the income that's generated by those assets. So that's kind of an interesting uh, piece. There's no tax to move these assets into the trust. And during your lifetime, you can continue to you know, take the income from the trust. You can't encroach on the capital though. So if you put $100,000 and I'm just picking that number out of the air into this type of the trust, you can't encroach on that $100,000 worth of capital. And then on death, that trust will automatically pay the, the, the remainder balance, if you like, to the, to the charity. So that can be an interesting tool to, to be able to give back to the community and still have some control over those assets during your lifetime. Charitable organizations or different institutions can create different ways that you can give to them, and so one of those is the you know an endowment fund. So this tends to be more so with uh, you know large uh, you know uh, educational institutions, universities, if you like, you know where you can give your funds to a particular endowment fund, and it's going to be there long term to create scholarships or bursaries on behalf of the student. So you know that is a way to leave a a gift as a legacy, where a portion of your pro portion of your your gift is funding that endowment fund to continue a long term uh, payment to to uh, support those those uh, um, scholarships over a period of time so that that can be an interesting legacy piece you can as a family create your own charitable foundation so a private charitable foundation with specific purposes in mind and specific charities that you want to want to support um, it has to be uh, it can only be funded up to you know 50 percent of one person can fund into this kind of a, a charitable foundation so it has to have a bit of a larger scope than what what we would typically see in in uh, other gifting gifting opportunities that you've got but you'd have the administration you'd have some costs associated with it but you'd actually create your own charitable foundation that you could use to then support the community organizations that are important to your family uh, so that's another way that you can create a, an ongoing legacy and then there's another another type of account that's similar to you know the the first the endowment fund or the the charitable foundation called a charitable gift fund and so this is a fund that's part of a larger charitable uh, foundation so you know 
a a portion of an account that's part of a part of almost like a community community foundation and so you're able to give to that to that account it's in your name it's in your family's name and you're able to make gifts from that to support charitable organizations that are that are important to you and so we often see that as a tool especially you know all three of these areas that are kind of during your lifetime are you know potential uh, charitable giving tools that you can use especially if you're having you know having an event or a year where you're selling a business or selling a large piece of real estate or, or there's just something that's creating some additional you know taxation that that would otherwise happen and giving might be part of what you want to to do with those proceeds it's interesting to be able to use these kinds of strategies to help offset the tax that you would otherwise pay but also establish the endowment fund or that charitable charitable foundation or that gift fund to be able to support the community organizations that are important to to you and your family so we've gone through that relatively quickly and really to circle right back to, you know, what will your legacy be? What's important to you? What's important to your family? You know, there is no, you know, magic, uh, magic formula in terms of having to, you know, determine what that looks like and, and how you, how you, uh, you know, create that legacy. But if you have a vision of what that might look like in the, in the future, then there's certainly some resources that can be helpful in, in supporting the organizations, whether they're, you know, supporting that local community organization or the social enterprises that that are operating within the within you know providing services to the to the community um, we've got some ability to look at those those different ways that 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 can happen and so smarter easier and with more impact i think there are some 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 uh, resources that are available for you to to consider and with with that i'll i'll close off and and uh, see if we've got any any questions Scott, I have a question, but I don't want to jump in there ahead of uh, um, others who are attending. I'll just call on anyone uh, who might have a question for Scott before I ask mine. Okay, um, so Scott, um, who is the best? Who is the best person? Who's the best um, type of advisor? for any of us who are kind of wrestling with um, these questions and, um, you know, want to be able to plan, because I think you've really struck a chord here about how intentionally one should plan for this. So, um, you know, who who can advise us if we if we need to understand more deeply what the options are, but also just on, on how we consider uh, what our legacy might be and what kind of charities are out there, especially for people who may not know a lot about charities. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, I think there's probably a number of sources to to gather some of that in, information. If you're working with your, your, your investment advisor, then that's going to be a source in terms of asking the question. Um, your accountant, your tax preparer is going to be able to, you know, may not have the, the, you know, the specifics, but may have the experience of having worked with other clients that have done done planning in this area. So I think those are probably the, you know, the first couple of people that you talk that you would you'd want to ask the question of. I think beyond that, you might also, you you know, you look at asking the question of some of the charities that you might be interested in supporting. Chances are, you know, that charity is going to have some information or have a connection to uh, individuals that have set up something more significant from a legacy perspective. So um, talking to the charities that are important to you as well. Other community members, if you're on uh, you know, boards of, of other charitable organizations, then you know, there's probably resources within, within, that, within that group. So, um, so I'd probably start with your investment advisor to ask the question, talk to your accountant, and then talk to some of the uh, you know, board members or executive of, of local charities. As I say, chances are they've got, uh, they've got the resources or connections to individuals that may be able to help with at least laying the groundwork to some of the planning that you want to look at. Helpful, thank you. Um, and we have a question in the chat, um, and it's, uh, could you provide us with um, the uh, suggestion on how we can provide, and I, this is coming from one of our team, how we can provide charity information to those donors that have donor advised funds. Mm. I don't know, I have, uh, um, don't know that I have an off the top of my head question or answer for that question. So, so, so I think they're probably, you know, maybe is understanding what, what supporters may have their own, 
you know donor advised funds or or what uh, what families might be involved with with that maybe a question to ask some of your existing donors would be you know is that something that they've set up and if they and if they have then you know having a further conversation as to whether you know their support you know from their family can come from their donor advised advised funds um, so it's probably a little bit more of a research project to find out you know, you know where those donations are coming from and if it seems to be coming from a, a family that's you know coming from a, a named a named source like a like a family foundation or like a donor advised fund it's probably reaching out to those individuals and having maybe more of a full conversation about how they're giving um, I don't think that uh, there's a listing anywhere that would be, uh, you know, specific that would name those those individual do donor advised funds because generally they're under a much larger, a much larger uh, a charitable foundation account. Uh, uh, but I, a good question, a good a good research project, I would I would gather. Yeah. All right. Well, we know where to find you if we have a follow up on on that one and um, um, maybe I don't see any other questions in the chat so maybe finally I could ask you um, for uh, those uh, individuals already thinking about leaving um, uh, a future gift to charity do you advise that they let the charity know about that intended future gift I know I know how I feel about that um, being on the the end and, and running a charity in terms of the value of knowing about expectancies but I'm just wondering um, whether or not uh, you would advise you know um, would be donors to let the charity know um, well that's going to be you know to some extent that's going to be you know, a decision that the 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 individual donor is going to want to to, to have for themselves and um, I think obviously in terms of from a planning perspective from a plan giving perspective you know charities certainly want to know that they've been named in somebody's will or named in somebody's uh, insurance to to receive that gift just from the standpoint of that planned giving side um, you know I think clients may also want the flexibility that circumstances change over time and maybe they want to spread their spread their donations over more charities into the future or less charities in the future, whatever the case may be. So there may be some hesitancy for you know the fullness of that disclosure to happen. Um, but I think it's good information from a planning perspective for not only the charity to know, but the families to know that you know this is our intention as a as either an individual or as a as a family that these are gifts that are going to go to these different organizations and so that's good information to be shared um, so I wouldn't discourage it at all I would I would say it's a good planned giving approach um, and we know that that can be subject to change as time goes on so so um, as uh, unfortunately in some of the planned giving until the money actually shows up you don't you, know, you don't particularly know but uh, it's 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 nice to be able to be part of that conversation with with families as they make those those plans so so that's you know more of the planned giving strategy i think side for for our charitable organizations as to you know having that conversation with donors and and uh, if they are a part of that future plan then you know understanding what that looks like and how it fits together is important both for the charity and both for the family as to and individual as to how that donation can be helpful good good um Okay, I'm going to do a last call for questions here. Uh, nothing in the chat. Anyone yeah, I else? Have one. Oh, hi, Michael. Yeah, by hi. all means, go ahead. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Scott, for the presentation. I think that was very well put together. Um, uh, the one question I had, and I, and this kind of leads um, to sort of your experience on your end. Um, are you? I know very unique. All the, all of the different gifting opportunities are, are obviously very unique to the donor and, and their uh, specific circumstances. Um, but are you seeing families leaning uh, towards one rather than the other? And you know, and I'm thinking in terms of um, you know some are more beneficial in terms of administrative costs, which you mentioned. Um, but are you seeing or, or are you advising one over the other uh, if the situation is right? And so we're seeing. More families, you know, you know, it's kind of a between the the private foundation and the and donor advised fund or that that uh, that giving account, and, and a lot of it, a lot of it's you know what's the administration that's evolved evolved with it. So, typically those type of strategies come into play if there's a large um, you know sale transaction of businesses or real estate transaction or you know large taxation position happening in a year. Then, uh, if that family's you know looking to be 
you know, giving of some of those funds to support community, then the, the private foundation is looked at often. You know, there is a administrative cost to setting up the foundation, to maintaining the foundation, to doing all of the filings and the requirements of that foundation. And in some cases, that you know, that cost could be could be you know offset by the the benefits that are there for for the giving side of that that particular situation. Um, if cost is a concern, then the donor advised fund tends to be a way that we see a number of our clients starting to use that as a as a way to you know create that legacy gift and be there for the family to again make decisions as to how those dollars are 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 donated into the in in the future out to the different community groups uh, yet at the same time giving that opportunity to create something with a with somewhat less administration somewhat less you know um, regulation around it uh, to create that that fund and make sure that that donation goes in to be able to receive the the benefits from it um, now there's you know because it's you're kind of the the charitable foundation private foundation you're kind of paying the costs as you go of the legal accounting and the tax filings that that and administration as you go versus a donor advised fund where you may be paying some you know annual fee for the value of the assets that are managed under that account so so there's a little bit of a you know a balance that would happen as to you know cost benefit and or the amount of time that a family wants to spend on the administration with respect to creating that kind of a that kind of a a a, a, a legacy if you like so so I think it's going to as you say it's going to be specific to a to a family um, if cost is an issue um, then there's a you know cost benefit analysis between both both of those types of structures uh, that that someone would have to to look at and if someone's just looking to give that gift then the endowment fund for a, a community foundation foundation contribution to that to a community foundation or the donation outright to a to an endowment fund at a university or that or a hospital foundation you know obviously the gift is the the component there and the administration of that rests now with those those endowment funds or those community foundations so um, so it can vary it can vary perfect thanks Scott you're welcome thanks Mike for that question um, uh, all right. Well, I'm I'm going to bring this to a conclusion, but I I know that um, Scott offered when we were having a conversation earlier this week that if there were uh, future questions, sometimes those those jump out the minute we all press uh, leave. Um, by all means, uh, do send them to us, and uh, we'll get back to you with information. And in closing, I certainly want to thank Scott for his presentation and the information um, today. And I would say that. Um, it's it's never too early to to start thinking about this, is it, Scott? It's never too early. Never too early. Perfect, perfect. And uh, certainly, uh, United Way Simcoe Muskoka is is uh, is always ready uh, and and happy to uh, receive gifts of this nature, but also to talk to you about the opportunities that exist for uh, for future giving and um, uh, me or any of our, our resource development team would be happy to have that conversation. But I want to thank you all for uh, joining us today for this presentation. Wish you a uh, rest of a very good day. And um, we'll look forward to uh, um, future events just like this uh, as we go forward. Um, hopefully, there may be an opportunity that um, one of these events might be in person, at least in the coming year. So grateful to all of you. Bye for now. <laughs>